Hey, it's time for What's D Eating? That's the new name for this video that comes out on Sunday that used to be called Meal Prep. Now it's What's D Eating? Because you're not quite sure what's going to be here or what I'm eating. These are little snippets that I filmed during the week of kind of meal prepish type things, but I just don't like the term meal prep. I don't know. We're calling it What I'm Eating. 90% of these will be original recipes from me to you. So, and a lot of them will be stuff that I've posted on Instagram Reels as well. I'll save them and I'll throw them up in this video as well. So, without further ado, let's roll that what is the eating footage. All right, what are we making today, Dee? We are making black eyed peas and collard greens. Have you made this before? Hell no. So why not learn together? Now, I looked online and it said you have to prep your collard greens, taking out this, this stem in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it. I think you can maybe just run your finger down, but it's pretty, pretty thick. So we're gonna get, keep, discard. <laughs> so we're gonna do that for all our collard greens and I'm gonna give them a nice good rinse in the, um, in the clean water. Look at them all clean. And then according to what I read, is you get your collard greens and you saute them, which doesn't make sense. Like you think these will cook instantly? Apparently they don't. So you're gonna saute them a bit before you add, no, you saute them and then you put them in the instant pot and you top them with the beans and this the liquid. And then they cook, I think it's like 15 or 20 minutes and they cook at the same time. So apparently they become perfect. I don't know, it sounds really weird to me. I would think these will cook instantly, but hey, what do I know? I've never made this before, so we're gonna we're gonna sit here. I'm gonna get rid of these collard greens. And we're gonna wash them, and we'll come back. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, and the other one did really well. The one I want to film does it. Let me try another one. Maybe. There we go. That's how you do your collard greens. All right, I am soaking the collards after I clean them in a bucket of cool, clean water, and then I'm going to drain them in the strain and let them dry a little bit, and then we will get to cooking them. But I thought I would just show you. I'm super excited. I love collard greens. Why don't I make them more? I don't know. We might have to change that in the new year. More greens. While we wait for our greens to drain, I need a need of a little bit of snack. And I thought, oh, I want some veggies and dip. I have no dip. But I can make dip. I'm going to make some hummus. I make this all the time. So I'm just gonna go over it really quickly. One can of rinsed and drained chickpeas, quarter cup of non-fat Greek yogurt, a little bit of avocado oil, some garlic, salt, pepper, and maybe a little bit of sesame oil, and maybe some lemon juice. Again, I could see I'm putting spinach in too, cause spinach would make it green. Whatever you have, you throw in a broccoli. What broccoli hummus? Have anybody ever made broccoli hummus? I do have broccoli that needs to be used up. So I have my little mini chop. I got this from that product I reviewed. Probably the best product I've ever reviewed on my channel has been this five in one hand blender from Ace Cool. By far, it's really a workhorse, I will tell you. And um, this is an attachment, it's like a little mini chop. So I have my can of rinsed and drained chickpeas. I'm gonna add my yogurt. Now, it vary of your yogurt, how much I use, it varies, I'm not gonna lie. This goes how I'm feeling that day. And remember, I could always add more. Pepper. And we can always adjust the seasonings. Salt. We will probably need plenty of salt. Some fresh garlic. Well, yeah, I'm using jarred garlic. I know. And what it is, sometimes in the year I just don't go through a lot of garlic. And we're going to put some broccoli for our lips. Now I'm not gonna chop them because what the heck? We got a mini chop. Let that, let that do all the work. I'm just gonna I'm gonna break it up in pieces. But yeah, I've never made broccoli hummus. I forget how big could it be? It's a vegetable. Might be a little stinky, but I don't know. I'm gonna put another one in. I don't think it's too full. I do like to add a little bit of water. It helps it. Um, Get a little bit of motion, a little motion in the ocean. All right, I'm just gonna put maybe two tablespoons. I'll add the oil, I think, a little bit later. 
I'm gonna put my lid on. I'm gonna blend it up. I always check it and scrape the sides. And maybe now that I've made some room, I might wanna add some more broccoli. Looks interesting, I will tell you that. Let's go a little bit green. Let's put a little bit more broccoli in there. I'm going to add a little bit of the oil now. We'll do that some more. That was a little one. Let's add our tablespoon of avocado oil. You can use olive oil. You can use any oil you choose. Remember, you're not going to eat this whole thing at once, so don't worry about putting that much oil in. Put our lid back on. We're going to keep pulsing. And if you need it to be thinner, again, I would add a little bit more water. Okay, I'm going to add some more salt and pepper. And I'm going to do a teaspoon of dill pickle seasoning. I just think it would really go good with that. I don't know. I'm feeling. I'm feeling some dill. You know, feeling some dill. Do I want any more garlic? I don't know. I don't think it would hurt. Let's put it that way. Okay, I'm going to whiz it up to get all these together. We're going to ready to have some. There you have broccoli hummus. I'm not telling them it's broccoli. I'm telling them it's spinach. Let's see how it goes. But it tastes good to me. The ranch throws it over the top. Delicious. So there you go. I say you make a quick dip. Low point, zero point. Obviously, that one tablespoon of oil is all we had to count. And it's all on all this. And I got this. So, yeah. I'm good. I could dip some, I think, some carrot chips, some pretzels, and have my snack. Maybe some broccoli. Why not? All right, in my Instant Pot, I'm just using flavored olive oil. I mean, you could have bacon if you had bacon, but I don't have any bacon, so I just do have candy bacon. I may throw some of that in, but I don't want to render it because I think it'll get tough. So I have flavored olive oil. I'm just going to throw in mine. It tells you to saute your greens first, then put your beans and water in. So we'll go to saute our greens on the saute cycle. All right, cook until wilted. So I'm going to keep turning them. You can hear all out of this until we get a nice little, so they start to wilt down. And then we will add our dried beans and our liquid and maybe our Canadian beans. <laughs> I could have put too many greens in here, but it will all work out. We keep tossing. It is already starting to cook down. This was actually over the top when I felt it, so it is starting to cook down. Apparently, they don't cook, um, like I always thought they would cook down when you put the beef, apparently not, so I'm just following what Google says. Because I've never made these before, so. Right, they keep tossing, and they are, they are getting, they are starting to cook down, so. Just wanted to show you, they're all wilted down very nicely, and I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients. All right, our greens have wilted perfectly. All right, let's give them another toss. Then we're going to throw our black-eyed peas. They haven't been, they're still hard. We don't throw them in the Six cups of water. I, have to, I might have to add more because I did have a lot of green. So I need to add a little bit more water because you want to make sure that your black eyed peas are is submerged. And mine are not because I probably have way too many greens. So yeah, I'm going to put probably another at least two cups of water. All right, I have enough. I just added another two cups of water. I'm going to throw my slices of Canadian bacon. I have about five slices chopped up. Help with that smoky. Again, if, you, if I had real bacon, I probably would just use it. Put that in there. And we're going to cook it on high for 15 minutes. Let it natural release for 20. So. Here goes nothing. 
cooked for 18 minutes, natural released for 15 minutes, and they are perfect. Look how good that looks. I hear it's supposed to be good luck for the new year. I have no idea. I just like, I like beans and, and greens, so I'm, I'm excited to eat this with my pork roast. So that is a quick little black eyed peas and collard greens. Like I said, you could have used bacon for more flavor, you know, than, I'm, than I use. Like I said, I used garlic infused olive oil and some Canadian bacon, but um, I'm, I'm expecting my pork roast to give it some flavor. So I will plate up my dinner and I will show you how I'm going to serve it. All right, here is dinner. Um, black eyed peas and collard greens in the Instant Pot and pork roast in the crock pot with sauerkraut. Um, I just have to really technically count the pork roast. The sauerkraut is zero, the beans and greens are zero. So it just all depends. So I would say it's probably like a four point dinner, give or take. But I can't wait to eat my good luck for this year's dinner. Happy New Year. Time for another Progert Bowl. Today I'm using the Clean Simple Eats snickerdoodle this one is one point for this pack and these packs are one serving so let's get started to your yogurt bowl you add one portion or one serving of protein powder i'm using clean simple eats snickerdoodle today these packs are one portion we're gonna mix 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 top as you like i'm going to use some granny smith apples a point's worth of julian pro granola it's a whole quarter cup i might use all of it it's really a lot and some pumpkin some flour seeds and some Lily's chocolate chips. This adds no points. This only added one point. And there you have it, your Progert bowl. There you have your two point Progert bowl, one point for your protein, one point for your Julian granola. I do have a discount code for Julian granola if you need one. Let's make a quick and easy waffle breakfast sandwich that is low in points and delicious. First, you plug in your waffle maker. I'm using the cute little dash. You can use a regular waffle maker. Any waffle maker will work. Plug it in, let it heat up, and let's start on our batter. I have half a cup of Kodiak Power Flour. You can use any of the Kodiak pancake mixes or the Trader Joe's protein pancake mix. Any one you want, you decide what flavor you want. I'm using pancake um, power flour. I have a tablespoon of Monkford sweetener, a tea half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. To that, I'm going to add one egg and one half cup of unsweetened cashew milk. You can use any milk you choose and mix it together. To give it that McDonald's McGriddle taste, I'm gonna put a teaspoon of maple extract and mix it all together and let it sit for about two to three minutes. All right, we spray our little waffle maker with some nonstick spray and we add just, you know, you know how much, I would say a little less than a quarter cup of batter maybe about a quarter cup. You want to overfill it, put the lid down, and let the magic happen. Let's reveal the beautiness. There she is. Isn't she stunning? I'm going to put her in the toaster oven to keep her warm while I make the rest of her waffles. We take two of our hams, a slice of Canadian bacon, and a fried egg. And now you have your McD breakfast sandwich. I need a snack. Let's make a greens smoothie. I have eight ounces of cashew milk unsweetened in my blend jet. I'm gonna put one scoop of my Motivate greens. Flavor is peach. With a half a banana, frozen of course, and a dash of vanilla extract, I'm gonna blend it up. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of some non-fat Greek yogurt just for a little protein and a little creaminess. And blend it up. Look at that. Cheers. Combine getting your greens and a snack. Motivate. You're the best. What are you making today? I'm making another Progert bowl with my clean, simple proteins vanilla. I hear this is a really good one. Let's see. All right, to my one cup of non-fat Greek yogurt. It might be a little bit of a heaping cup. I just needed to finish the container. Going to add the vanilla, clean, simple protein. It is two points. I'm gonna add that and mix completely. Look how fluffy that has become. You can eat this just like this and it'd be fantastic. That's a nice portion for two points, but we're gonna, we're gonna top it a little bit. You can be a little bit neater than mine. I'm gonna to top it with a teaspoon of just chia seeds. 
So I like the crunch of chia and some fresh fruit. Some bananas and some blueberries. It's half a banana. I'm gonna top it with a teaspoon of sunflower seeds, a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds, and 13 lilies chips. That all is a zero point amount. We're just gonna dust that on the top. But we're not done yet. A tablespoon of slivered almonds. You could top it with anything that you like. And there you have your protein yogurt bowl, or I like to call it progurt bowl. And if you want to take it over the top, you could put a tablespoon of this pure caramel flavored syrup for zero points. And why not? Because, you know, it's breakfast. <laughs> Let's outdo ourselves. So there you go. Didn't add any points, but added a little punch of caramel. All right, time to make breakfast. What are you making? cannoli overnightettes Do it for breakfast tomorrow. so let's see how it goes i'm going to add some ingredients tomorrow when i plate it up but this is what i'm going to do the night before so let's go so in my jar i have half a cup of oats i am using quick oats today it's what i have on hand either oats work quick oats or um old-fashioned either one works honestly i don't have a problem with either one that's how I start off all my overnight oats recipes is a half a cup of oats. That is three points. So to that, we're going to add, let me think where I'm at now. Oh, I have them over here. A teaspoon of chia seeds. No, this is not in cannoli, but I like it in my oatmeal, so I don't think it's going to change the flavor, so I'm still going to add it. Again, you don't have to you can leave it out. And we're going to put some sweetener. I'm going to put some monk fruit. I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to put three tablespoons because I want it sweet. Cannolis are sweet. So we're going to do three tablespoons because remember, our cheese is not sweet. So we want to add some sweetness. Dash of salt and some cinnamon. You don't want a lot of cinnamon because cinnamon is in a cannoli, but it's not real prevalent. It's just in the background. So I'm just actually, I think I can have a shake. I'm going to shake a little bit on here. Again, I could always add more tomorrow if I think I need more. Just a little bit, just like that. A little more. There you go. That wasn't even a quarter teaspoon. Now, the star of the cannoli overnight oats is obviously the ricotta cheese. We're going to put a whole half cup. Now, I am using this one from my local store, the Bowl and Basket. It is fat free ricotta. You can use any ricotta, absolutely. You don't have to use fat free if you don't want to use fat free. Just remember to adjust the points. A half cup is one point, so I'm using a whole half cup. Get in there. There we go. Um, now you could add yogurt if you wanted to in here. I don't think it would be bad, but I'm choosing right now not to. I can always adjust. And another major important component is vanilla. So I'm using my homemade vanilla. I'm going to add a whole teaspoon. Oop, or maybe more. That was a little bit too much. <laughs> I'm a little excited. I'm a little excited. Now I need my milk. Did I not? I forgot my milk. All right, I'm going to grab my milk out. All right, so I'm using creamy cashew milk. And I'm going to put about a half a cup. Now, normally I don't need this much because the yogurt's a little bit watery, but you, you saw that ricotta cheese is very, very thick. So we're just going to put a half a cup in there. And we're going to combine it well. I need a big, long spoon. Now, I'm not adding the chocolate chips till tomorrow. I don't know if they're going to like disintegrate or get too mushy. So I am opting to add my chocolate chips when I serve it. Again, you could, like I said, you could put them in tonight. I don't think it would be a bad idea, but I, I, I don't, I want my chips to be, you know, I might add more cashew because it seems pretty thick. So I'm going to go with another quarter cup. Right here, so it'll be three quarters. So I'm I'm creating this as we're filming. That's how I roll. You know, I live on the edge here. That's much better. Now tomorrow we're going to add our chocolate chips and some whip and some whipped cream. You heard that right, whipped cream, because 
cannoli is made with whipping cream and ricotta. So we could afford a point of that. This may be a little bit pointier. Like so far it's four points. Um, maybe five if you count the milk. I think I'm right on the cusp of counting this cashew milk. So we'll count it. I'll be fair. It'll, it will count that extra point. So it might be a six point over nine oats, but why not? Maybe seven if I had enough chocolate chips. So honestly, it might be a higher point over nine oats, but I don't know. It's worth it to me to have chocolate chips and cheese. So we're gonna let this sit and I will see you back tomorrow morning when we go and plate our oatmeal. All right, it's the next morning. I just came back from my WW workshop and we're gonna have some breakfast. So here's our oats. Let's dump them in our bowl. Now, if they're if the, you find they're too thick, mine are perfect. You could definitely add more milk. Actually, I think I even could have cut back on the milk a little bit. They seem a little too, I mean, I would like mine a little bit thicker. So maybe I could cut back on the milk. But either way, you could, I mean, they're, they're really perfect. Who am I kidding? Yeah, they don't look like cannoli because of the chia seeds. I give you that. But, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to top them like you would. This is when we add our chocolate chips. And now this is another step that, let me find a tablespoon. Hmm, just a tablespoon. Mm, I'll grab this one, I guess. This is a step you don't have to use because this is going to cost you another point. Now you could say, oh, dear, I don't, I don't want, this is going to be a high enough point because I'm putting a point of lilies in here as well. It's going to be around, I want to say this may be a seven point breakfast. So if you don't want to spend seven points, you absolutely can cut out the whipped topping. But I think two tablespoons for one point is exactly what I want. It might be easier to do this on a food scale, but you know, I'm just going to put. And this is just going to add a little extra creaminess to it. Is it a necessity? Nah, I don't think. I mean, that's, that's up to you. I'm adding it. I think it's a necessity, quite honestly. So I'm just going to just kind of swirl that in the middle. Right there. And then we're going to put 30 Lily's chocolate chips. Now you could put more if you want to add another point. 30 is one point. So I'm going to count 30 chips out. All right, we did our 30. Again, you could put 60. I would, I may think about doing 60. And I'm just going to just dust it with cinnamon. Very ever so lightly because cinnamon isn't prevalent in cannoli, but it is there. So there it is. Well, let's have a taste and see if it hits the notes that I'm looking for. There we go. I'm going to swirl my cream in there. I think this is gonna give it a little bit of, would this be a good dessert? I think so. <laughs> I think the cheesecake over it is a good dessert as well. Look at that. This is a lot. Now you may even think this is too much. Like think about it, you're eating cheese and oats. It might, you might not be able to eat all this anyway thought. Okay. Cheers. Shut up. This is so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, it was good. Wow. That is so cannoli-ish. And ha having the quick oats l makes it seem less oaty or like it's, you know, the you know, not as heavy in oats, so it's nice on your palate. This is absolutely delicious. I I may want to go up to two points of chips, though, if I'm going to be honest. Oh, 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 oh. This is good. And that little bit of cinnamon, perfection. If you could, I definitely, if, if I had a blindfold, I would say this is, what's this like a cannoli? Winner, winner. Could be a dessert. Like you could have it or make 
put it into like have half for one night for dessert, half for the other night for dessert. Absolutely. I mean, those aren't just for breakfast. They can be for dessert, right? So I'm going to go eat my breakfast. Mm. Yeah, me. Thank you for clicking on this video. You made yourself a priority and this is the reward you get. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, give them a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D. We are making interesting concoctions with our food. So if that is something that you are interested in, then join us here. This is absolutely outstanding. So thumbs up this video if you enjoy eating with D. That's what we're gonna be calling this, eating with, what's D eating? This is what she's eating. This is what she's eating to lose her 116 pounds. So, if you don't eat like a chubby girl, like Mud Hustler used to say, you like a chubby boy, then join us here. Because I don't know about you, but I like to eat. And that's not going to change. And we are eating here at Dish with D. So, I will dish with you another day. Thanks for watching.